Hi friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, let us understand how a regular antenna array analysis can be done using unit cell creation in HFSS. To do that, first let us create a new project and insert an HFSS design. So once this is done, we can include all the variables into the design by clicking on project and selecting project variables. Let us enter all the variables here one by one. So let me just enter dollar $wp, unit type is length and the value is 37.26. Next we can add dollar $lp, again unit type is length and the value is 28.81. Let us add dollar $wg, unit type length, then the value is 49.22. Similarly, dollar $w, similarly dollar $lg, unit type is length, then we can have the value as 40.22. 7, 9. The next variable is dollar $LF with a length as 15.16 dollar $WF 3.2 then we have dollar w i so the value is 4 millimeters dollar l i this is 9.18 then we will just click ok so now all the variables are entered now let us start creating the geometry so for that first let us create the substrate so to do that click on this rectangular box just drag and drop here now we just rename it as substrate and you can assign the material as fr4 you can give color green here then afterwards you can click here double click on the create box you can give minus dollar w g by 2 comma 0 comma 0 as a position then for the x size you can give dollar w g for the y size you can give dollar l g and for the z size you can give minus dollar h so then click ok so here dollar h value we have not declared you can just enter it as 1.6 millimeters click ok again click ok you can see here the substrate is created let us uh, make it a proper orientation like this now we will create the feed point for the radiator so to do that create a rectangular sheet you can give the name as the feed and here you can give the color as copper color click ok then give the dimension here so in the position you enter minus dollar w f by 2 comma 0 comma 0 then x size will be dollar w f and then y size is dollar l f then click ok you can see here the feed is created next we have to create a radiating patch to do that create another rectangular sheet so rename it as patch change the color then you can just double click on the create rectangle enter the position minus dollar wp by 2 
comma dollar lf minus dollar li comma zero x size you can give dollar w p and y size you can give dollar l p so then click ok <coughs> you can see here the rectangular uh, radiating patch is created now next to that we have to create the inset gap so to do that let us make a copy of this patch and you can rename that copied version as the gap then here you can double click on the create rectangle and you can change this to dollar w i let this as dollar lf minus dollar li comma zero then here instead of dollar wp you can just write dollar wi and dollar lp is replaced with dollar li you can see here another rectangular uh, sheet is created so now select this patch and then hold the control button select gap just use this subtract operation and click ok you can see a gap is created now select this patch and hold the control button then select feed then go again here for the boolean operation unite you can see here the complete radiator is created now the next thing is we have to create a ground so how to create the ground so let us create a rectangle here you can just double click on this create box of substrate you just copy this position and then you just go to this rectangle you just paste it and you can rename this as ground here give the color as copper color you can double click on this grounds create rectangle here you can just give minus dollar h in the position and here let it be dollar wg and y size as dollar lg now we can see the ground is created at the bottom with a distance from the origin minus dollar h in the z direction now this is a normal ground so we have to create a defect so before that let us assign the excitation port here so to do that let us change this xy to zx and then draw another rectangle then you can call this as excite excit let me just type that and this need not be any color here you can just give the position as minus dollar wf comma uh, by 2 comma 0 comma 0 then x size is dollar wf then y size is minus dollar h you can click ok so you can see here the excitation is created now let us assign the excitation for this right click assign excitation click on lumped port here let it be 50 ohm and then in the integration line you just select a new line and here you just draw an integration line so then click next finish so port assignment is done you can just observe here in the excitations the port is assigned similarly let us assign the materials for the ground and patch so for the ground right click assign boundary click on perfect electric click ok you can see here under this boundary the perfect electric is uh, assigned to the ground similarly let us go for the patch and then assign the boundary as perfect electric here so click ok so this is perfect electric one is a ground and then perfect electric two is a radiating patch and we have the excitation here now this is a simple rectangular inset fed microstrip patch antenna and uh, let us uh, create the open region here and enter the frequency as 2.4 gigahertz click ok you can see a radiation box is also created here 
So now next what we can do? So we can just go to this radiation, just double click on this 3D and here we can enter the theta start value as minus 180 degrees, click OK. Now if you just check here the validation, it will show only the analysis part is pending, remaining all is correct. Now let us click on analysis, right click here, add solution setup. We can enter the frequency as 2.4 gigahertz and maximum number of passes as 18, then click OK. Right click on the setup one, add frequency sweep. Here you can give uh, frequency from 2 to 3 gigahertz with a linear count of 1001 samples. Let us click OK. Now the validation if you check, it will show all green. So now let us make analysis here by clicking on analyze all. So the simulation started. Now let us check the result here. For this single element antenna, this we are going to use it as a unit cell for the array formation. Now clicking on the results, here you can select far field report, here 3D polar plot, then select gain and db here. So just click new report. You can see here for the single element antenna, we are getting the gain approximately equal to 2.8846 gigahertz. Uh, this is still running. We can wait for the simulation to complete such that you can get the actual gain of this particular unit cell antenna. So now the simulation is completed. This is the final gain value that exhibited by the unit cell patch antenna. Similarly, we can click on the results here to get the resonance characteristics. Click on model solution data report, rectangular plot and here S parameters click here. You can see here the antenna is closely resonating at 2.4 gigahertz with a S11 of minus 16.1485 decibels. Now we have to transform this into antenna array. So let us go to this radiation right click and see here antenna array setup click on that here you have an option called regular array setup click on that click ok now you can see here you can right click one more time and you can see here array setup and there is an option called regular array so here u vector is along x axis v vector is along y axis and here it will ask you for the spacing between the elements in x direction and y direction. So since we have designed a 2.4 gigahertz antenna array, so the spacing lambda by 2 will come out as 62.5 millimeters. That I will put it in the x direction, the same value I will put it in y direction also as 62.5 millimeters. Then it asks for the number of cells, that is number of unit cells to be placed in the x direction and y direction. Here u direction is nothing but x axis and v direction is nothing but y axis. So initially I'll just give it as 1 cross 5. So that is in u direction I'll give one element and in v direction I'll put five elements. Here uh, the scan definitions I'll put it as 0 for time being. Later I'll explain you uh, what is the purpose of this scan angles. Now click OK. And once you do that, uh, <coughs> you can see here, you can just double click on this radiation pattern and you can see the gain is increased to 9.894 dB. So this is for 1 cross uh, 5 elements. Now let us right click here once again and change the array size. So I will just put it as 5 cross 5, u direction 5 and v direction 5 and let us click OK. You can see the gain will be automatically changed to 16.86 dB. You can see this is the radiation pattern that we are getting. The beam is becoming more and more narrower. Similarly, I can give a very uh, big number here. So let it be some 25 by 25. Okay, so you can see the gain will be 
increase it to uh, I think uh, 30 dB so this is a huge gain that you are getting and the beam is becoming more and more narrower this is how we can use a single element antenna that what we have created and we can analyze it for uh, the antenna array configurations with the different uh, array sizes now let us have some uh, time on this uh, scan angle so let us click here once again and you change this scan angle to say now we can have a look at this peak radiation here in the z direction and now when i change this to say 45 degrees so in the phi direction let us see what will happen you can observe here uh, there is no difference found here let us go to antenna array setup once again and here let us put uh, uh, 45 degrees for theta also so let me just uh, click ok it is uh, loading yeah can you see this now the direction of the major lobe is changed similarly you can just uh, keep changing the angles here such that the beam uh, the focus will be shifted to different angles I can give it as uh, say 90 degrees uh, and here I can just give it as some 75 degrees and let us click you can see the maximum radiation point will be shifted to some other locations yeah you can see this so this is how we can do beam steering of antenna arrays also that's all in this video thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe like and share to your friends thank you